uh, how Russian disinformation is cozying up to the far right in the United States and what's going on in Ukraine. Also in the second hour, who is behind the woke lie about corporate giving to BLM? Are they lying just because they think the, ju the ends justify the means? We'll talk about that in the second hour. Also in the second hour, um, LGBTQ plus people in Alaska are no longer protected against hate or discrimination like they were last year. When nobody was looking, uh, the attorney general deleted these protections. In the third hour of our program, as predicted now that the uh, Fox so-called news is finally reporting on the Dominion lawsuit, yeah, they're lying about it, <laughs> or it certainly seems that way. Uh, also, Minnesota Gen uh, Republican State Senator Steve Drazkowski um, is, speaks out on a bill providing free school breakfasts and lunches. Uh, it's pretty grim. I'll, we'll actually play a clip from that in, this, in the third hour. And we've got a great geeky science. Is our perception of time driven by the speed of our heartbeats or events around? It's a, it's a fascinating topic. We'll get into that in the third hour. Um, the, the only guest we'll have all day is Phil Edner and you, you know, calling into the program. And uh, so to start out, the op-ed that uh, I published this morning at my daily takeover at HartmanReport.com is titled, Why Republicans Frightened of a Guy Called Tucker Carlson Could Cause World War III. And it starts out with a, the story of Boris Johnson. You remember Boris Johnson. He was the conservative prime minister of the United Kingdom. Um, isn't at the moment. Uh, Rishi Sundak, I believe, is the guy who's uh, the prime minister right now. But, uh, you know, uh, Boris Johnson was there for quite a while. He's a conservative's conservative. He's a smart guy. He graduated with honors from Oxford and Eton and all that kind of stuff. A uh, very smart man, in fact. And uh, he came to Washington, D.C. about two weeks ago to visit Republicans, to, to specifically to drum up support for Ukraine. And he was shocked. He was, uh, after his visits to a bunch of uh, Republican members of the House, uh, he participated in a conference at the Atlantic Council, or sponsored by the Atlantic Council. Uh, and so he was asked about his meetings with Republican lawmakers and, and what he thought about the effectiveness of Russian disinformation campaigns in the United States aimed at right-wingers. Um, and, you know, I, I've got more information about this I'll be sharing with you in a few minutes. But um, this is what Boris Johnson, the former prime minister, the conservative who visited all these Republicans, had to say. He said, and I quote, I don't think we're as good on this as we should be. and We need to be countering these arguments. I've been appalled to discover how many people I've just been here for a couple days. It's always wonderful. I have a wonderful time in Washington. But I've been amazed and horrified by how many people are frightened of a guy called Tucker Carlson. Has anybody heard of somebody called Tucker Carlson? What is with this guy? All these wonderful Republicans seem somehow intimidated by his, uh, his perspective. And I haven't watched any of these things that he said, but I'm struck by how often this comes up. Some bad ideas are starting to affect some of the thinking around the world about what Putin stands for, what he believes in. It's a disaster. He stands for war, aggression, systematic rape, murder, destruction. That's what he stands for end of quote from the British Prime Minister. As Boris Johnson knew, Republican flirtation with fascism and obeisance to the famous right-wing media figures has deep roots. I mean, it, it almost destroyed the United Kingdom when his predecessor, Winston Churchill, was Prime Minister. You go, what? Well, pretty much the same thing. Four months before Germany began bombing England, Charles Lindbergh, uh, a man in his day as famous as Donald Trump gave a, a speech on radio. It was, uh, the, at the time, there were only a couple of radio networks, and this is how, you know, the, the America got, got its news. This was massive. This was, this was way bigger than, than Fox News. And Lindbergh basically made the argument that we should not be, you know, involving ourselves in the war at that, at that point in time, uh, Hitler had already taken France, he'd taken Poland, he'd taken Czechoslovakia, he had taken, I mean, you know, the, just lift, and, and he was bombing the crap, or he was, uh, uh, four months later, he would begin bombing the crap out of England. And uh, Charles Lindbergh, this incredibly famous conservative Republican media figure who was thinking about running for president, 
said, we are in danger of war today, not because European people have attempted to interfere with the internal affairs of America. He's talking about Hitler, of course. But because American people have attempted to interfere with the internal affairs of Europe. Our danger in America is an internal danger. And then he, now keep in mind, this is the guy that uh, Goering in 1938 gave, the, uh, gave a, an award to. It was the Service Cross of the German Eagle. Hermann Goering gave him that award in 1938. And he had been taking Hitler's side in 38, 39, 40. This is 1941 that he's giving this speech. And uh, he, 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 then he goes on to say, he says, regardless of which side wins this war, in other words, because at that point in time, it looked like Hitler was going to win the war. He was going to at least hold most of Europe, whether or not he took England. So, you know, Lindbergh says, regardless of which side wins this war, there's no reason aside from our own actions to prevent a, a continuation of peaceful relationships between America and the countries of Europe, in other words, with Hitler. If we desire peace, we only need to stop asking for war. And then he goes on to talk about who in America is pushing for war. He said, the only reason we're in danger of becoming involved in this war is because there are powerful elements in America who desire us to take part. Now, he's talking about Jews here. He says, they represent a small minority of the American people, but they control much of the machinery of influence and propaganda. They seize every opportunity to push us closer to the edge. He goes on to say, history, he's talking about how if, if we got involved in the war, this was a speech in Des Moines, Iowa in 1941, if, if we got involved in the war in Europe, it would destroy our economy, he says. He says, quote, history shows it cannot survive war and devastations, the economy. A few far-sighted Jewish people realize this and stand opposed to intervention, but the majority do not. Their greatest danger to this country lies in their large ownership and influence in our motion pictures, our press, our radio, and our government. He goes on to say, now this is two months before Pearl Harbor, I have been forced to the conclusion that we cannot win this war for England regardless of how much assistance we send. That is why the America First Committee has been formed. Yes, it was Charles Lindbergh to help Hitler destroy Jews who started the America First Committee in the United States. You know, so many Republicans had to, at that point taken the floor of the House of Representatives giving speeches on behalf of Hitler. I saw the book, here it is right here, that uh, this book my father gave me uh, back 50 years ago, The Illustrious Dunderheads by Rex, Rex Stout. It's full of all these quotes from all these Republican politicians saying, we can get along with Hitler. We can do business with this guy. Come on, he's, he's, you know, he's, a, he's a businessman. We, you know, we, we don't have to worry about this. So, I mean, this is, that, that was Lucky Lindy, right? That was Charles Lindbergh back in 1941. Now we've got Tucker Carlson here in the United States. And... Uh, here's, I'm going to play a clip here, and Nate, this is the, this clip of, and it was put together by a, uh, by a Republican Accountability. On, it's on Twitter, and it's also at the end of my article. And this is clips that Republican Accountability put together of, of first, you'll hear, uh, you'll hear uh, Vladimir Putin, or actually a translator, as he's speaking. And then you'll hear Tucker Carlson saying the same thing. Here you go. The U.S. started the war, and we used force in order to stop it. If there is any single American who deserves scorn and, yes, blame for the invasion of Ukraine, it would be Joe Biden. The Ukrainian people have become hostages of their Western masters. And Ukraine is not a democracy. It's a client state of the Biden administration. The U.S. were training on the future theater of military actions by owning biological laboratories in Ukraine. Military biological programs are under development in Ukraine, financed by the U.S. Defense Ministry. Western countries were setting military bases on our border. The Russians don't want American missiles on their border. They don't want a hostile government next door. NATO took specific actions, expansions to our borders. Getting Ukraine to join NATO was the key to inciting war with Russia. The elites of the West are not hiding their goals. They are trying to inflict a strategic defeat on Russia. The Biden administration wanted all along a regime change war against Russia. The initiators of the sanctions are punishing themselves. So it's not Vladimir Putin who's getting punished, it's American citizens. It's you. The West provoked the growth of prices in their own countries. 
collapse of energy sector. Gas prices are already the highest they have ever been in history. So the price of natural gas and the price of electricity and food and everything else you buy. I think we should probably take the side of, of, of Russia uh, uh, if we have to choose between Russia and Ukraine. That is my view. We're on Putin's side. <laughs> right. So there you go. So if this handful of Putin-loving Republicans led by this generation's Charles Lindbergh, the, the, Tucker Carlson, if this handful of Republican loving or Putin loving Republicans can kill our support for democracy. By the way, the money that we've appropriated for Ukraine runs out in about three months. And Kevin McCarthy is going to have to, and as said, I'm not going to give a blank check, right? We'll see where this goes. But if they succeed and Putin then succeeds in taking Ukraine, his senior officers and President Medvedev, uh, former President Medvedev, and former Russian Prime Minister Mikhail Kaznikov have already said, Medvedev said they're going to take Poland next, and Kaznikov said that they're going to take the Baltic states next, Lithia, Lat uh, Lat Latvia, Lithuania, and, and uh, Estonia. If they do that, I mean, this is the same thing as, as, you know, Hitler invading Poland. If they do that, immediately thereafter, I, you know, I think it's fairly safe to predict China will cement their alliance with Russia, Iran, and Saudi Arabia, and then they'll try to take Taiwan. And at that point, as Russia is taking Europe and China is taking Taiwan, you will be in World War III. We can stop World War III right now by stopping this Russian aggression in Ukraine, which will cause China to rethink taking Taiwan.